Georgina. Hello. <laughs> okay, so hello, 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 and welcome back to another episode of Georgie Stripping the Dipping. <laughs> I'm, your host. <laughs> I'm your host, Georgina Dona, where I'll be taking you on a journey where you and I can discuss anything and everything, but today it's about something. So, but then, you and I have a guest from, I want to say Hollywood, but then again, I'd be lying if I say Hollywood because he's in England. <laughs> However, his name is very freaking famous in Hollywood. <laughs> um, so, yes, let's welcome our guest for today, Denzel, not Washington, it's Clarkson, it's Denzel Clarkson. <laughs> hey, Georgina, Georgie, so, so, so exciting to be on this platform with you. Thank you for having me. It's an absolute honor. And firstly of all, can I say big up your damn self? Because I am so, so, so impressed, so, so, imp- like, you know, like happy and excited about what you're doing for the community, the conversations you. that you're having <laughs> and the work that you're doing. And on this very special day, I must say, Happy International Women's Day out there too to all thank you so women much. around the world. Thank you so much. I'm thank you so much. Uh, representing the whole damn nation of women. <laughs> exactly, exactly. But just as an intro for myself, it's your boy yeah. Dens from the ends of North London, England. Fastest brother on the track. They call me Michael Woo! Shiblaka when I jump into the simulator. And yeah, I, I you know I make F1 content. I do a bit of sim racing. I speak to very intellectual and very intelligent people like Georgina and have great uh, I'm the dumb one in that too. <laughs> so you know super super excited to be here as always yeah so uh, I'm super excited that you're actually here so we can actually have a proper conversation regarding a lot of areas a lot of topics serious ones of course but I'm basically very happy excited and bloody nervous <laughs> at the same That's time <laughs> Um, so yeah, so uh, we will be today talking about a very, well, we can say it's a very touchy area, but yeah, so we will be talking about DTS, not DTS, it's not Bandan Sunyondan, it's DTS, which stands for Drive to Survive, but I don't know who the hell is surviving with that show, so yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's what we're going to talk about mainly, but then again, there are so many areas that we'll be talking um, with regard to the uh, Formula One, and then of course, we will be touching some areas that can be very sensitive as well, And but we need to talk about those things, so Shall we start? (laughs) Absolutely. Absolutely, Georgina. I think it's a great place to start and I'll let you begin. Okay. All right. My first question to you is regarding the DTS. Um, So, normally a show can be based on a sport, but we rarely see a sport changing its course over a show. We haven't seen anything like that anywhere. But we have seen it because of DTS, because of Drive to Survive, the whole whole drama that's been happening. So, my question to you is, is DTS just a regular show or has the show taken over the sport? Sure, Georgina. And I think that's an excellent question to start this conversation off with. For myself mm-hmm. personally, I think that DTS or Drive to Survive, which ironically is not dropping too far away, it comes out this Friday on the 11th. Um, yeah, it's bloody more hell. than, you know, just a regular show because it has the ability to bring in new fans and to, mm-hmm. like, you know, basically prophesize the sport into place of the world it wouldn't normally be yeah. shown. It gives us insight into the lives of the teams and the drivers and the mechanics and what it really fundamentally takes to run a Formula One team. But also, there's an element of debate which we're going to get into now with is it good for the integrity of the sport when it has Mm -hmm. also this negative effect to change the sport from being, you know, a competition more into just entertainment and one of the most controversial decisions we ever seen in the you know the 70 plus years of the sport was made in light for entertainment purposes which you know is a nod to drive to survive 
So um, yeah. personally, um, just you know, to give some fans some perspective, my you know background into Formula One. Uh, my dad is a huge follower of it. Um, I was born in 1995, and by 1998, you know, I was sitting there with my dad watching a, a red car go around the circuit, otherwise known yeah. as my Kushima car. And back in that area, George, you know, just for context, yeah. you know, we didn't have the level of access we had to the drivers. The sport yeah. was owned by a very wealthy, very exclusive man known as Bernie Eccleston. His views yeah. were very very you know outdated and very narrow-minded you could say mm -hmm. he never really wanted you know like people like you or i to have access to the sport and it was very exclusive yeah. this billion dollar basically you know, he like, was a white man with a white sport he doesn't need he didn't want any other color of people going into this sport of course spot on there george you know you know but because of the likes of lewis hamilton and you know the emergence of you know ethnic minority people coming into the sports and working their way in it's definitely yeah. changed the landscape of it and in that sense you know now we're getting more access than ever with the new owners liberty media that want to kind of you know basically enhance the fan base they want to grow they want to make formula one almost like the super bowl in america yeah. which is huge and bring the entertainment value but you know you can't have basically a sport where you have competitors you have people driving cars at over 200 miles an hour you know it's very yeah. dangerous the sport too and essentially race directors you know picking and choosing manipulating the race like it's you know like a toy car like a scale electrics toy car on a rail you know to yeah. basically predetermine the result or to fit into a certain narrative and many of us feel that that's what we saw in Abu Dhabi where Lewis drove the perfect race yeah he was out beating his championship rival Max Verstappen a raw pace with two laps to go you know an yeah. unfortunate um incident happened where a driver crashed and they had to put a safety car out there yeah. which is the procedure they used to allow the marshals to safely take the struck -in car <laughs> off the track and the race directors we feel used the opportunity opportunity they were optimistic to, ch yeah. to basically bend the rules for the sake of entertainment and basically manipulate the, the race so it would mm -hmm. make Lewis Hamilton and the championship uh, rival Max go into a, a last lap showdown for the championship which was yeah. very unfair to Lewis considering he had followed all the rules and which is by if, the way very ridiculous as well absolutely absolutely bear in mind we've never seen something like this in 70 yeah. years the rule was manipulated like that to basically predetermine an outcome like that it's so unfair, you know, to Lewis, who had maybe, you know, not his strongest season due to the regulation changes of the floor and Mercedes having to yeah. adapt and redevelop the car to make it competitive. But my God, he put in some really awesome performances throughout the season, which we saw in Brazil when yeah. he gave him the... Well, well, there, there was, there was uh, I'm so sorry to interrupt you, but there was this sure. um, car race that we need to talk, we need to grab uh, the attention regarding that. Because... No, uh, if it, it it was perfectly okay for them to give points and uh, choose as a winner without even a race, and they just went around two rounds so that they can um, just keep the money for themselves without refunding the fans, right? And then they went with the um, um, the decision that um, after uh, the person who just um, led the lap, who he will be getting the points and this and that. But then again, a weird sort of uh, because that was also happening behind the safety car but then again on uh, in, in in Abu Dhabi there was a different different method that was used apparently it was motor racing which we were ne not familiar obviously so that is ridiculous the the inconsistency in this uh, decisions making uh, with the racing director and even the stewards it's ridiculous so true so true true georgina and i absolutely agree with everything you said there you know i think what it's come down to is you know some people out there they don't like the um the, the almost the predictability that you know lewis yeah. and mercedes work extremely hard they did their homework yeah. early when the regulations were told to them they went and built the best car for eight years of championship domination and now it became a time where these people that have influence so you know basically the rule makers the stewards the race director they deliberately try to you know go against the integrity of the sport the actual yeah. spirit of the sport to construct basically an artificial championship where every race and it's not just Abu Dhabi you also mentioned Spa there's 
there's also yeah. a case in Jeddah. There's also been a case in Brazil. There's been many cases throughout the season where it seemed like they they tried to fix the championship so it would essentially go down to the wire at the last race for the views and entertainment. And I don't think that's a sustainable way to run a sport. I don't think that that is you know the intention of how the sport has been run in the years that it's been built up leading up to this event. And absolutely, I think the fans' reaction to the controversy and the, the disasters or what happened throughout the season was fully justified and hopefully moving forward now you know we're going to be going back to sport back to yeah. competition back to integrity with these two new race directors that we have which we've heard that they are zero nonsense Georgina they want to see racing yeah. on the track they don't want to see racing decided in the stewards room or you know being scripted artificially on top of that as well we have these checks and balance systems being introduced with a video yeah. assistant referee that's a third party yeah, that's, that's, that's one of the best decisions that they have taken Absolutely. I, I need to agree on that yeah Absolutely. And, you know, I think there is a place for something like Drive to Survive. And it's nice that, you know, it's being able to bring the fans closer to the drivers exactly, and personality exactly. and teams. I mean, but there must be know, a balance. Exactly. Exactly. There should be shows. There should be some sort of a show, a documentary or the things that can make people understand and make people get their attention where we can grab their attention towards Formula One because Formula One is a motor racing competition, a sport, but it's not known by everyone. Uh, now, if we take cricket or football or rugby, everyone knows that there's a sport like that. But when it comes to Formula One, not everyone is aware of it. But True. through these shows, we can grab that attention. But, but there's a huge but because a show should be a show and a sport should be a sport. A sport should not be overtaken by a show because the show should be based on the sport not the other way around what sure. happened in Abu Dhabi was the other way around absolutely Georgie and again like I agree 110% with you and it's almost like this the infamous saying it's like you know the dog walking the owner rather than the owner walking the dog you know yeah. it was the complete <laughs> opposite you know and these people they need to understand that you know at the end of the day we don't mind who is the winner we don't mind if we see the same winner all the time all we yeah. want to see is a fair battle on the track you know and exactly exactly able to go you know wheel to wheel in a fair and you know integral manner we don't want to see you know things being artificially decided and unfortunately yeah. the FIA and I feel the stewards fell short of that so you know it definitely has changed the landscape of the sport you know we've got this new series coming out in less than three days time now and that also I think is going to show us quite a few things but I think if they need to keep a series like that and they want it to have longevity they need to be more honest with themselves and take a much more you know integral part to, to the sport and be more true to themselves True, true. Um, which actually comes to the next question I want to ask you. The contract. The contract that Max received was after the Abu Dhabi pantomime, right? So he received it afterwards, this huge contract. Um, do you believe he's worthy of that if it is solely based on the fact that he's the 2021 controversial title winner? Yes, Georgina, thank you. Another great question. And let me say, money, 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 money. Because, <laughs> you know, that, that is what it essentially comes down to. And, you know, yeah. to, split, you know to summarize yeah. my point, I would say no. I, I don't mm -hmm. think he's worthy of this contract. I believe, you know, because you also have to bear in mind that Red Bull are not a traditional Formula 1 team in a sense. They're not a manufacturer. Red Bull don't make yeah. cars. Their whole business model is based on PR and basically advertisement and trying to make a statement to keep relevant. So the more cynical part of me believes that, you know, this move that Red Bull did to give Max a new contract was basically them trying to say, well, listen, this is our champion and we're going to try and put him on the same, like, you know, pedestal as like Lewis yeah. because they're now earning the same money. But my problem with that, Georgina, is what does Max bring to the sport that Lewis brings to the sport that makes him valued at the same value as Lewis? Because you have to bear in mind, Lewis has been in the sport longer than Max. Max, mm -hmm. um, sorry, Lewis is much more... Um, uh, much more commercially marketable than Max Verstappen. Yeah. He's much more widely known and has much more followers on the internet, has a greater following than Max. Lewis has won well, more world championships, 
broken way more records than Max has achieved. And Let's emphasize on that part. Let's emphasize on that part because the guy who has seven world championships he worked his ass off to get all those things because of that he received that payment he received that contract but after a controversial title which was freaking unfair based if this contract is based on actual actually based on that result saying that oh he is the champion so he's worthy of this contract then hell no uh uh-uh. uh and uh, that is so wrong Absolutely. that is super wrong it's so true and georgina that thank you for making that point because that was going to segue into the next um you know bullet point i was going to bring into this as yeah. well it's what did these two drivers bring to the sport because okay you could argue that max has brought entertainment controversial or not but lewis is really like one of the trendsetters of the sport you know man because when you look yeah. at lewis he's not just a driver he's an advocate of equal rights he's an advocate for climate change he's an advocate you know for veganism he's an advocate you know for all of these great causes diversity you know basically standing up and having conversations that make people uncomfortable but they're conversations that need to be said you know and even in 2020 you know when you saw him wearing these t-shirts for all of these causes around the world it meant so much to us and it showed that you know the sport is much more than just a sport but has the influence to change people's lives and to inspire people across the world so you know my question is how do you put Verstappen in terms of monetary um you know like uh, remuneration on the same with Lewis when Lewis adds so much to the sport but you know I think it's also good to have a balance I don't agree with what Red Bull have done, but I could see also from their, their perspective alone why they did it, Georgina. Because we also have to take into account because Red Bull, you know, won the, the title controversially, they managed to attract a new sponsor or like they had an existing sponsor, a technical company called Oracle. They were yeah. a side sponsor. And now to be a big sponsor, to have their name on the side of the car and in the team name, they have paid Red Bull 500 million you know, for advertising. So if you look at the maths then, and we say that Red Bull uh, received 500 million from a new sponsor, and they're only going to give Max, you know, like 55 million, that's only 10% of like the, the, the money they got from the new sponsorship. So when you look at it from that kind of scheme, you could understand why Red Bull did it. And leading into the other point I was going to make as well, as much as I don't respect Max's aggressiveness on the track and sometimes Mm -hmm. unsportsmanship, we have to bear Mm -hmm. in mind that Red Bull is... No, Max Verstappen is the only reason why Red Bull are even relevant. Because, you know, Red Bull have failed failed miserably they've been you know they had a good run with sebastian vettel between 2010 yeah. to 2013 they got complacent and they also maybe you could argue had some bad luck but that's part of the sport and they yeah. failed to challenge mercedes for a championship up until 2021 and max you know being the young driver I have to bear in mind max has been in the sport since he was 17 years old you know, yeah. it's the only reason why Red Bull have even been able to challenge or even breathe on Lewis Hamilton's name, right? So <laughs> yeah. you can understand from their point the of only, view why. The only thing Horn and Newton fell was on complaining. He kept on key. He, he's very consistent on that. On yeah, complaining. of course. He's Spiny Winter balls. Spice. He's the fifth member of the Spice Girls because, you know, Christian <laughs> is married to a Spice Girl and I think he should be part of that band because he's always whinging, you know? But um, yeah, just, you know, like Max has technically saved that company save that brand if it wasn't for max they probably wouldn't have a driver that could you know bring out or outdrive the car to challenge the other team so from their point of view it's clearly a statement one i think to like try and pair lewis try and kind of like upsell themselves and keep themselves relevant but two they want to try and keep max there as well because they know if max goes Who's going to drive for Red Bull based on the way that they treated Alban, Gasly, yeah. Kvyat? All these drivers have gone through the Red Bull uh, Academy and, and had this severe treatment. Who's going to go and sign up for that? Nobody. So they had to give Max a big contract to sustain his interest and, you know, probably to prevent him from going to another rival team because they'd be in big trouble. True, true. I mean, w- without him, there's no existence for the Red Bull because I, I think they were in a tight pickle when it comes to the last year's title if they didn't do everything and they did steal the damn title but still if they didn't even get that then i think the outcome would have been greatly harmed to the red bull so that's why they went for that 
and Jeez. it was a bloody scheme it was disgraceful i'm not saying that it's very fair even though because because that's ridiculous they, they should try to find out in the performance way not the stealing way how to improve but they they, they just improved and developed their stealing method which is ridiculous but yes without max there's no red bull surviving yes true <laughs> so speaking of red bull my next question to you is uh, mercedes as a big player that's one of the major big players in formula 1 uh, so as a big player in f1 mercedes is trying to represent the diversity and we've seen it by many actions they've taken mm-hmm. what do you think red bull represents Yeah, well um the, it's interesting you should mention that George, you know, because almost red like Red Bull and Mercedes are almost two different things and you know, I'm going to go with Mercedes. I really believe that with them, you know, they are a global brand George. Everybody yeah. around the world knows about Mercedes. They recognize the free pointed star. They have famous popular culture songs, you know, like Janis Joplin, "Oh Lord, won't you buy me?" and all these things, you know. So it's a huge yeah. brand. And for Mercedes, you know, they want to be sustainable. They want to try and touch platforms and break records and push you know like boundaries that they've never been in before and even for myself Georgina I can give you guys a short story you have a good voice me. though I was just you know I was just listening all these small parts that you were singing you are good at singing man <laughs> <laughs> thank you Georgina who knows you might be able to cut me my first record deal you never know but you know funny enough in my real life kind of like what I do in real life you know I work in the legal sector in the commercial property world and when I was trying to break through in university not many of them would give me the job you know and a lot of them try to say oh well you know it's because you don't have experience but i believe it's yeah. something bigger than that i think it's because of the yeah. color of your skin you know how down that question is these people ask when you're hiring a person they ask him for the experience from a school leaver and a school leaver or a university graduate they they apply for the job to get the experience but they want experienced people to get into the job does <laughs> that even I make mean. sense It's so true. Thing. It's such a it's such a contradiction, George. You know, and that kind of like adds to my pain. You know, they gave me a hard time, so I said, "Listen, you know, whilst I'm not getting work experience at a law firm for now, where can I go yeah. and do something that I find interesting, and you know, can also give me people skills, you know, to develop in the future?" So I said, "You know, you know what? I will see if I can apply for a job in a Mercedes Benz dealership." And lo and behold, you know, George, you know, I had a meeting with like a regional manager. We sat down. I was like maybe 21, 22 years old. He explained to me, you know, he said, "What are your visions? What do you want to bring to the brand?" I explained, and he said, "Yes, I am the regional manager for Mercedes, and the things that you're telling me about diversity, inclusion, sustainability, Damn, that is what we as like, you know, the company want." So, working with Mercedes-Benz in the dealership, the kind of passenger car division was my first job and you could see yeah. the philosophy and also just to give you guys a history lesson too the company was um you know it was um started by a guy called Carl Benz he was a very mm-hmm. good engineering mind but you know the saying behind mm-hmm. a great man there is a superb woman and um there has his partner was known as Bertha Benz and she was the mm-hmm. first test driver car so imagine a wow. female on I this did day. not know that Exactly, you know. Imagine on International Women's Day, we look back at the, you know, the attributes, the accolades, the achievements women made, and it was a woman who tested the first motor car, you know. And there's a saying that the reason why like many people test cars acceleration from 0 to 60 is because Martha or Bertha Benz, sorry, the the, the wife of uh, Carl Benz, drove the first car from her house to her mother's house. and the journey was 60 miles that is why you know they say that they measure cars from 0 to 60 how quickly they can go that is a not to her so you know women have had a great place in you know the automobile and you know in life just generally and mercedes acknowledged that you know they have these moments of you know diversity and inclusivity yeah. trying to do that and then to bring it back to formula 1 as well um georgina You have to also yeah. bear in mind that Lewis always been with Mercedes even in his junior days he was um you know he's basically managed by Ron Dennis the owner yeah. or like the principal of McLaren at the time they struck a deal with Mercedes so Mercedes have always actually backed Lewis for his junior career and he won his first uh championship with a Mercedes engine and then he yeah. promoted himself further to work with the Mercedes like you know works team I think I think I think when it comes for Lewis um I'm so sorry i interrupted you sure. um i think when it comes to louis 
when he if you are comparing when he was in mclaren and then uh, in mercedes um even when he was in mclaren he had some uh, regulations to follow like how he should have his hair and this and that but Absolutely. he has more freedom in mercedes he is treated as a person not under some uh, you know a, a boy in a english hostel sort of an environment he's free in mercedes Preach it, Georgina. It's so true, and that's correct. You know, a lot of these teams they have their own fundamental philosophies and ways that they are. McLaren, you could argue, was a very conservative team. They actually were mm-hmm. trying to get Michael Schumacher one year, and Michael said no because mm-hmm. you people are telling me what sponsors you guys want me to have, and I'm my own German driver, and I want my own sponsors. Yeah. So even in that element, but bringing it back to Lewis, yes, it's true that you know they wanted Lewis to have short hair. They had a very conservative. like way of lewis and lewis was not yeah. maybe given the, the the freedom of speech to speak his mind and you know to yeah. you know like basically adopt these causes back then but at mercedes they've always had that respect for lewis and they've always done that and i think why lewis is even more like you know like listenable and why he's even more like worthy to have that platform is because he's successful you know and he he stands for all of these positive causes that i mentioned earlier too so that also reflects mercedes and being an employee of them once upon a time in my life i can definitely say that it is the same even you know on the outside of the formula 1 team that they have these values and they want to co- they want to continue to push for these great causes yeah but when when we let's come back to the question that i was asking from you regarding red bull keep in yeah. mind that we yeah red bull re- what red bull represents in um, formula 1 when it comes to the diversity but keep in mind that red bull has helm marco and also red bull fired two top executives with a diversity issue yeah absolutely what do you think and- red bull actually represents Well, Georgina, yeah, to, to come back to your your original question, yeah, with Red Bull, yeah. I don't think that they're there yet, Georgina. I think that they're still in the Stone Ages with certain things. I think that you know, I don't their think whole business. It's true, and I think that with them, I think that their whole philosophy is on like a different platform. You know, you see mm-hmm. the class that you know Total Wolf has and the compassion that he has. But then when you compare that to Christian Horner, you know, he's, he, can, he can be very, you know, narrow-minded. He can say very arrogant and ignorant comments. He was well, heard. Nobody doesn't even saying, know what he's talking about. He he exactly. doesn't even know what his mouth is saying. True, you know, the other day he said, "Oh, women only watch Formula 1 because of like the handsome drivers." And I said, "That uh-huh. is BS. That is completely the furthest thing away from the truth." And you know, they don't know. People like them, Georgina, they need a lot of education. Yeah. But I think also, Georgina, it just speaks to the sort of company and the sort of thing they are. They're not like Mercedes where they're trying to build for the future or have long-term sustainability. Their thing yeah. is just publicity and it's trying to like make like it's basically red bull almost they're like a diss rapper in the rap community they try and say lots of con- like controversial things like a takashi 69 or you know these elk rappers that don't have much talent or they don't really have like a history and to just try and keep themselves relevant with the giants they must have to like try and go out of the the the, the, the boundaries go kind yeah. of like more disrespectful push people the wrong way to try and like probe a response you know but yeah i think that they need a lesson and that's why it's a shame that f1 have moved away from the re-race as one campaign because it made it that drivers and teams and team principals had to go and educate themselves and i hope that even if they're not going to have the um the kneeling before the the parade lap and they're not going to do these physical gestures that at least behind closed doors that they make it a responsibility for the teams to have these programs because mercedes have it they have accelerate 25 which is basically a program for those who don't know where they're trying to recruit um you know children from less represented backgrounds you know in science mm-hmm. technology english maths these brilliant subjects you know the future designers the people that are not just going to build cars for formula 1 but the technology yeah. for formula 1 cars is going to go into road cars that's going to make the world much better much cleaner much more you know beautiful for the environment so 
I hope that the FIA and you know we have a new, um, you know even just a new president to the FIA, you know Mohammed um, Bell in, in I can't even pronounce his last name, but you know basically a new uh, president to the FIA, um, you know yeah. from a, a more like you know Muslim background. I really pray that this is the start of the revolution and we're gonna see this change, you know. So absolutely, I think that that will force teams like Red Bull to you know pull up their socks and to do better. Well, uh, okay. Let's just say, um, let's pray for that, okay? Because we Absolutely. all want to be, yeah, we we all want that. Let's pray for that. But uh, the VP is also Escalant's wife, um, <laughs> and they're having brunch. <laughs> True. Um, just uh, you know, um, uh, because uh, we can pray. Of course, we want that. We need that change, but. There's a reality that we need to see here, and there's a way of things that's happening around here. So, looking at the way things played out, the way that the uh, whole drama laid out as well, um, there was a recording. If not for F1 Jordan, we wouldn't have known about it because we never had anything to do with. Uh, we never went back to check on the videos or anything regarding uh, Formula One after Abu Dhabi, uh, but. The FIA already knew about it. They admit that they were aware of it. But even though they were aware of it, they took 30 days to start an investigation, which fans forced them to do. Okay, if the fans were not forcing these people to do all these things, they would have just let it go. Making that point, right? So yes, we really do need to see that change. For God's sake, for the love of at least a tiny bit of sport love. We need to see that change, but well, there's a reality check we all need to see because it might not happen. It won't happen overnight, George. Yeah, I think it it might not happen over. Yeah, exactly. It might take a long time, but during that time period, at least if it's going to happen, then it's way better, at least for the coming younger generation. Absolutely, you know, and that that's what you want to see. And just, you know, to correct my point earlier, his name is Mohammed Ben Al Salyam. So my yes. pronunciation for his last name there. <laughs> it's all right, it's all right. But yeah. of course, you know, like, yeah, you know, we, we are seeing a slow <laughs> shift, but you're correct. And I think also that's testament to the people, testament to yeah. the fans, testament to the communities like the 44 F1 Jordan, Quick Stop F1, all these great platforms, you know, that yeah. have not stopped. They've been relentless with, you know, the, the, the kind of encouragement encouragement and and also kind of the exactly. message that they're making very clear about how they want change and you know they've given basically the FIA no choice because you know yeah. without us there is no them you know yeah. I think, you know through I mean, seeing when it the comes response, for a governing body it should be a governing body it it should not play for a website that he's supposed to they're supposed to be governing the sport they're not supposed to rule out just favoring one particular team or person uh, but it was going in a wrong way. So yes, this is not going to happen overnight. It's going to take a long time. But un- it, it's a, it's very unfortunate. You know how I feel about this. It, I really feel very unfortunate to even say that this is not going to happen overnight. This is going to take a long time, and this and that. These are not supposed to happen in this way. These are supposed to be already happened. It, it, it's supposed to be already taken in place. You know. We have color issues. I don't know what the hell that color issues that white people have. That's a white problem. We don't have that problem. And, and then uh, to get the justifications to make the sport keep intact with the integrity, we need to uh, wish for these things. We need to pray for those things. These are not the normal way. But yes, hopefully one day, one hour, one minute at a time, I will pray for God that these things should happen must happen and we we get to see that it's happening absolutely it's so key (laughs) it's really key and of course you know i think that we're taking the steps in the right direction and it will come it will come because if you know if you in the 90s if you ask my dad oh would there be like a black Formula One driver that would like break all the records and he'd be basically creating a platform? Uh, yeah, your dad will be asking, did you hit your head somewhere? <laughs> yeah, he, he'd be telling me to shut up because he's too busy watching Mika Hakkinen and Schumacher <laughs> go through a rouge, you know, and go free wide on the yeah, like, you know, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, You know, so it, it will happen. But like you said, you know, it's sad that it's going to take so long. I think, yeah. as always, my parents used to say to me, 
difficult roads lead to beautiful destinations yeah and i think the fact that we're having these conversations now that we're confident to have these conversations that you know exactly. people have to listen to us they have to yeah you know it's listen gonna people, make listen difference. please for god's sake for the love of sport please listen to us <laughs> <laughs> of course of course <laughs> so i need to ask you this question denzel what was f1 for you before abu dhabi and has it changed after last year's title match Oh, absolutely that's that's another sensational question Georgie and yeah for me before um Abu Dhabi for me Formula 1 was you know a competition for technical innovation brilliant you know Formula 1's always been about basically you know pushing the boundaries of what a car yeah. with four wheels can do and having the bravest drivers the most talented drivers from around the world compete you know for one single honor and a team championship too you know so yeah that's what it meant to me beforehand but now you know i think that yeah abu dhabi has definitely shown us that you know it can like cash is king that it's about the commercial side of the sport rather than actually the the actual spirit of the sport sometimes and mm-hmm. you know that it, it's a spectacle and that has its pros and it has its cons because on one aspect i'm glad to see that we're branching off into more places of america we're seeing you know like these drivers that are having their own personalities you know and i remember many years ago before the the start of like the american grand prix they had this mm-hmm. introduction for the drivers and lewis came out to this awesome music like a boxer you know like a gladiator <laughs> and i was like so awesome that you know they're bringing this value to the sport but at the same time too like we touched on with the likes of drive to survive and these other commercial entities as well you know we don't want it to just become like a scripted kind of like um circus you know with yeah. the race directors being like the class clowns of the circus yeah. or amusement park. i mean if you want to go and watch a scripted one then i i'd rather watch cars you know the animation uh, <laughs> i would love to watch that rather than this bullshit you know at That's least you guys <laughs> <laughs> and even with that even with cars george even that has more meaningful stories and more like yeah. uh, kind of like lessons behind that that teach children more than what these are trying to do which is just like corporate greed how, like like you mentioned earlier which is a great point how do you make people travel all the way to belgium you know in standing in the rain for hours you know in almost hypothermic conditions you know and you put the safety car out there and you just put it out there just so within the technical rules of the sport you can say yeah. that there was a race but there was F- no F1, race F1, in terms exactly. of exactly f1 should understand the point 101 rule of any sport or anything that mm-hmm. is the fan the without the fans there's no f1 there's no existing of anything because if there are no fans there's no income for them so That's at true. least they should have considered that and they should have respected the fans who actually bloody waited under that pouring weather pouring weather they were waiting and waiting and waiting the least they could have done was refund at least they could have done was if they can't refund they would have given a free ticket for the this, for this year's season at least at least but they didn't give a flying damn about it they just went on with the two lap behind a safety car and then they just didn't even bother to mention about it and i watched all these uh, videos with the media the drivers and only louis as i can remember only louis mentioned uh, about refunding or getting the money back to the fans it's so true you know and it's just again it kind of is going to probably bring us on to the next question i know you're going to ask me but that is lewis you know he always yeah. wears heart on his sleeve he's a genuine guy he's a sportsman he's an ambassador you know he he represents so much with what is right with the sport and the okay, so let, let me ask a question then for you from you as a black guy i personally don't like to use these colorful words because it's actually ridiculous in my mind to start with even it, it's bullshit because even white is of color so i don't know but since we are using it in this world to answer questions and all so uh, i'm so sorry for using these words though <laughs> um, sure, as a black guy um yeah so as a black guy how do you see louis's situation in f1 well georgie i think that louis is like almost like it's almost like louis is living through me you know when i think about yeah. this he, he is like the epitome of like what the normal black 
man or ethnic minority will face in the western world you know because just to give people context about lewis as well he wasn't brought up with a silver spoon in his mouth okay yeah his dad had to work three jobs remortgage the house several times yeah. just to kind of even make lewis's career a possibility you know lewis is always growing up with that um humbleness that sense of knowing his roots knowing where he comes from knowing his people and you know even from just the early days of his career he was subject to lots of racial abuse you know i remember one race in spain where the fans went there in blackface and you know there's lots of you know historical you know, when, when, I, when i saw that video clip my heart felt so heavy i swear to god i don't know how a person would bear such treatment and yeah. he had to keep his mouth shut there was nobody addressing that issue and I, imagine him being in a position and it, it's just you know us seeing that clip if we are uncomfortable just seeing that clip like that imagine how he would have felt how all these colored people will every day they are going through this every single day they are going through this yeah, i have- i don't know how how they are Oh my god, I don't even want to you know I'm actually lost at words cuz it's very hard to explain the feelings that I'm getting cuz it's not it's, emotional. it's not yeah, it's it's not normal. I don't know how you guys actually bear all these things cuz I haven't personally experienced this cuz I'm living in Sri Lanka and Sri Lankan actually they don't have any racing race issues here. So okay. we have never experienced those things. because um we have we have muslims the buddhists the christians living together here so what well, we 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 have never seen a person's color as a different thing so it's it's very um it's very it's, it's actually it's very weird for me uh, to Absolutely. be honest from my per- yeah it's it's from my perspective it's it's freaking weird for me i i i um I can tell you an example for me um uh, for me when I was in Singapore I studied in Singapore so uh the first time I had to introduce myself um the lecturer was asking uh, all these people to introduce themselves so in Singapore the Singaporeans the way they introduced themselves was one person uh, stood up and the person was saying hi i'm um, her name and then she was like uh, i'm uh, indian singaporean and the other one was a chinese person and the person was saying i'm chinese singaporean and then i was like uh, um that was super weird for me because i was not familiar with that whole whole thing and then i was uh, wondering what the hell does that even supposed to mean and then the lecturer was asking me what where i'm from and to give my introduction and then i said hi my name is dona and uh, i'm a sri lankan and then the lecturer was asking me um sri lankan what and i, I was like uh, sri lankan sri lankan <laughs> i was like uh what do you want me to say sri lankan uh, something <laughs> i was super confused and then she was like no what are you and then i'm like um uh, sri lankan buddhist um, i i don't know what you expect me to say so it was so weird for me you know so yeah. i have never experienced that and it was like I don't know how people live with that. I really don't know. And after seeing the whole Louis issues, <clears throat> to be honest, in Sri Lanka we didn't understand from my point of view, I didn't understand the whole um issue with the or uh, black life matters. Okay? Because we haven't experienced that Denzel. So we have no clue what it was. So there was this whole thing going around uh, about all lives matters and in my point of view at that time I was thinking why it's only black lives matters of course it's all lives matters everyone is having issues and this and that okay please bear with me uh with this and then after some time when I came on twitter I was I was on twitter uh since from 2012 but I was not that active only after Abu Dhabi I started using twitter a lot because that was bloody bullshit yeah. and I couldn't bear that okay because i can't stand injustice i have an issue with that i can't stand injustice sure. even even if it's a boss i would dare say straight away to the face that dude you fucked up you need to clean up <laughs> cuz i can't bear it so after look, after seeing abu dhabi i went on twitter and i was like what the hell is happening i tried to search for everything you know getting involved with all these um tweets and the spaces and everything and then slowly 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 i understood the whole 
thing about this color the black lives matters and then i was like i felt so bad for myself because i didn't understand the whole thing at first when i was thinking about the all lives matters because we haven't experienced that but after getting to know this i was like i felt like how big of an issue this is you know and to see all these tweets tweeting the racism tweets that been targeting louis all this time even after this title battle you know the orangutans the bananas the monkey tweets and all this i was like yeah. oh my bloody god what the fuck is this i'm so sorry for cursing but i was like what the bloody hell is that yeah george you is fucking ridiculous yeah it's true and george you know like I'm, i'm glad like you said that because that's the thing like we're all learning and we're all seeing kind of like true things like rise to the surface but yeah th- this yeah. is kind of the common thing that <laughs> ethnic minority people black people asian people when they come to like england or when they're in europe I, this I, is I, a very I'm, common I'm thing so sorry i am experience. so so sorry denzel because i am very ashamed that without knowing I was thinking about the all lives matter was right and then only I got to know what exactly was happening in the world regarding this so I feel really ashamed that I even said yeah all lives is matter it was right because I didn't know the behind story I am so sorry for that oh, I I you really know, am. you don't have to <laughs> apologize you know because that's the thing you didn't know it it didn't come from a place of hatred or that you you're putting like black people down yeah, that was very new for me I never realized yeah. it It's so true, you know, and, and and you know, bringing it back to Lewis, yeah, this is what he faced, you know, when he was a kid, George, you know, there's certain yeah. like when he was on the track, there's certain kids that you know their parents told them not to hang out with Lewis. He's a bad influence, so like what black the? people have a bad like, reputation, so stay away from him. Don't share your gloves with him. He went through oh a God. lot of terrible, traumatic things that no kid should ever have to experience growing up, you know. But the thing with Lewis is that his parents yeah. at least you know educated them from an early stage, like my parents have too, and they've always said, "Dense Lewis." You always going to have to work 10 times harder than your peers. You always going to, you know, when they get away with doing stuff, you're not going to get away with it. They're going to judge you much more hardly. So that's why Lewis, you know, he he holds himself to such a high standard. That's why when he doesn't win a race, you can hear in his in his in his voice. But, this but frustration that is, with that himself. That is taking a toll on you guys. That is taking a huge toll on you guys. It's it's not fair. It's not freaking fair. That is so fucking unfair. Okay I I mean others can do whatever the hell that they want but you're having standards and a, a a frame that you need to fit in and you're not supposed to process your emotions the way the others are processing because if you do then that's not good that's not acceptable but for the others it doesn't matter that is bloody bullshit that is yeah. fucking bullshit this is messed up man that is this is really messed up It's crazy. It's crazy, Georgie, you know, and I share your frustration and and fury about it too because, you know, even me, I've experienced it from a systematic level in school, you know, in in work as well. And it's just one of those things where it ultimately like, you, you know, either you, you you kind of deal with it or you crumble and like you said it shouldn't be that way it should be like a fair play playing field for everyone and everyone should have the opportunities and things should be based on merit rather than you know the the way someone looks or the color of their skin or their gender or sexual orientation or preference you know this world has a lot of growing up to do and a lot of learning to do but you know having conversations that we have today i think is the yeah. catalyst for you know this change and this is why i'm really honored you know and thankful to you to have this opportunity you know to to have a conversation to have a respectful you know meaningful deep conversation you know and i admire you you know for at least you know you also taking a look at yourself and you know saying well you know this is what i could learn and maybe this is how i could change or play up it so you yeah. know i think if we continue on that basis you know we're going to see some really beautiful things happen in the next couple of years even sadly when when lewis unfortunately does move on which i think I'll cry but yeah. you know i think that you know the message won't be lost and i think hopefully that we'll continue to see things in the right direction yeah. and definitely you know we we should all be able to come as one i think that's the aim okay so um coming back to the other question um you know Trevor Noah right so there was uh, this clip i found on tiktok um it's actually based on the ukrainian war with the russians 
um, I I will try and play it so that you guys can hear. I on TV didn't expect a war like this to happen in, let's say, certain neighborhoods. This is not a developing third world nation. This is Europe. These are prosperous middle class people. These are not people trying to get away from areas in North Africa. They look like any European family that you would live next door to. What could be a difference here from other conflicts, you know, that could seem very far away, you know, in Africa or Middle East or whatever. I mean, these are Europeans that we're seeing uh, being killed. This isn't a place, with all due respect, um, you know, like Iraq or Afghanistan. You know, this is a relatively civilized, uh, relatively European, I have to choose those words carefully too, a city where you wouldn't expect that or hope that it's going to happen. Wow. That was you choosing your words carefully? That was the careful version? So what were you going to say if you weren't choosing your words carefully? I just hope the next time this happens, it happens back in the Middle East where it belongs. But here's the thing, people. Here's the thing. Beyond the racism, right? Like, let, let's let's forget the racism. Or oh, how I wish we could forget about the racism. You do realize that until very recently, fighting crazy wars was Europe's thing. That was Europe's entire thing. That's all of European history. They even had something called the Hundred Years' War. You understand how long that is? That's like a decade. They got a Nobel Prize because they stopped fighting. Imagine that. Now people are going to be like, oh, to see this in, in Europe, to see this. Like, I'll tell you now, I don't know about you, but I was shocked to see how many reporters around the world, by the way, seem to think that it's more of a tragedy when white people have to flee their countries. Because I guess what? The darkies were built for it? I mean, you see how they run in the Olympics, Peter. Clearly, God has given them this talent for a reason. I totally agree. I mean, even if this wasn't a war, these people would probably be fleeing their homes for fun. It's just who they are. <laughs> Back to you guys in the studio. A lot of so um, that was actually. <laughs> I, I, I don't even know what to say. I hope you guys heard it. I, I'm not quite sure. Um, was it? Did you hear the clip, uh, Denzel? Yeah, I did, George. You know, loud and clear. You know, and, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So basically, that's uh, that's that's the mindset of the media in regarding your your Ukrainian uh, Russian issue because um, um, they are basically um, apparently they are not from a third world. Um, developing nation or the African countries or Afghanistan or Iraq. Um, they are supposed to be civilized Europeans, uh, white people who are uh, apparently fighting each other. It's like, um, uh, what do you call that? Harry Potter magic or something for them? Uh, I don't know. So uh, what <laughs> my question to you is, what's your take on these comments? And do you think F1 is any difference when it comes to the racism since it's also a freaking white sport yeah uh, again very very deep question george you know more than happy to answer it as well yeah like first of all i, I just want to say you know that my hearts are out there with you know those affected in the in the uh, invasion in the conflict yeah. right now happening between ukraine and of course we don't yeah of course and that's what we want you know human rights more than anything but to bring it back to the question yeah like georgina it's so ironic in a way the hypocrisy and the contradiction of these european people because imagine now they're in a situation where the Ukrainian people are being persecuted essentially and they're trying to evade war, you know, from the actions of Vladimir Putin. They're desperate to try and run and escape. But they're the same people that are trying to persecute Africans and, you know, refugees and people that have also tried to, you know, either immigrate or, or move for a better life or they're trying to also, like, you know, move away from conflict. And yeah. what I want to say is, what in the right mind gives these Ukrainian people the right, you know, to be racially abusive, to behave the way that they've behaved, you know, the lack of humanity, the lack of compassion, lack of empathy they showed towards African people when they're being put in an almost very similar, if not identical position to the, you know, the ways that African people are being treated. And to round off oh, my well, point... Well, apparently talking, they're civilized and we are not. This is the thing, you know, and also it's crazy that how like when, you know, when it's a European country or like a westernized country that's going through a disaster. Oh, this is terrible. Yes, we must help them. Yes, this is terrible. Yes, we must condemn, you know, the, the dictators. Yes. But then when it comes to like, you know, black people, 
or people from other ethnic minorities two monkeys were not given and what's crazy is that black people asian people people from ethnic minorities they're the reason why these westernized countries are the way they are today in terms of you know building them in terms of developing them in terms of supporting them during the war you know we have even in england you know the likes of like um mary seco or florence nightingale like women from like africa and the west indies that came to england during the war to provide medical support you know to soldiers that were serving during the war so how is it you know and i think tupac said it the best how is it that um, they got money for war, but they don't have money for the poor? And also, how is it that they can justify this level of prejudice thinking too? I agree, you know, it, it's definitely a contradiction. It's definitely wrong. And, you know, it's funny how, like, you know, they can point fingers at other people, but they won't point fingers at themselves and look at how even there's bias within themselves in the way that they look and the way they treat other people. Yeah, I mean... I, I actually, I'm, I'm honestly lost with words because I, okay, for God's sake, these people are supposed to be journalists for God's sake and they are sending the wrong message to the world. They can keep their white racist asses to themselves if they are doing a journalistic job on air. They're supposed to be, um, a, you, you know, when you're having a professional work ethics, when you're having a professional job, there are certain ways that you should be behaving. Um, it's, it's applicable for every single person. It's not only for the black people. It's not only for the Asians. It's for every single person. If you are in front of a camera, you have the responsibility of behaving yourself because you're sending a message to somebody who's listening, who's watching you. It can be a kid who's watching you. You're, if you're sending the wrong message, then that's going to be in that kid's mind and he will be growing up into some sort of a horrible person if you're sending a wrong message. And these people are using media, the, these big, humongous channels, to spread racism. What the hell is this? Okay, they should be talking about Ukrainians and Russians as nations fighting against each other. Not these civilized Europeans, they are not Africans, they are not from a third world country, they are not from Iraq or Afghanistan. Does that even make any sense? For yeah, it's not even what relevant. What the hell does that even mean? <laughs> it's not even relevant, George, you know, you're absolutely yeah, who, on the money. It's, it's correct. Oh my you know? God. That's the thing with these people, you know, they haven't been corrected or factually, you know, like, you know, like basically put under pressure for a long time so they think that their actions and the things that they're saying is acceptable but i agree with you it's anything but acceptable it's a disgrace you know really 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 disrespectful you know and almost inhumane the way that they speak about you know the african people or you know people from other parts of the world because they're not european and it must stop you know and to answer your question you know bringing it back to formula one you can yeah. draw you can almost draw like actually a lot of similarities in a very sad way because yeah. it's the same thing you know they wanted to be performative and they come out and said yeah 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 you know we race is one we race is one but we went from we race is one to becoming a race against one in Abu Dhabi exactly. you know and throughout Lewis's career when they've been much harder on him and they've held him to a much higher standard than they hold any other drivers or they hold any other authorities for the way that they are you know and it's it's absolutely terrible so you know in these spaces the twitter spaces where we're speaking about Abu Dhabi and what we'd like to see in the future we mentioned that you know we'd like to see a safe space yeah. for people like Lewis athletes like him which you know are not you know like basically represented or not supported or given like the safe space that he should be given treat, you know, treat to... them equally if you're gonna yeah. get angry at a black guy get angry at the white guy in the As same well. manner on the same point for doing like, the same things yeah doing the same things if Max Verstappen could storm out from the Jeddah podium and had no, no issues, anything. then yeah then Luis also can storm out from the podium and no one can dare to say a single word but do you think that's going to happen oh my god no those no. F1 fans will be blabbering a whole shit of bullshit again on Twitter oh my god look at this guy he has seven world champions and he doesn't even know how to behave and blah 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 you know how they run their mouth exactly no they, you know that's the thing with these people and you honestly georgie it's the yeah. way that they've conditioned like us to see 
black people they've conditioned us to see black people as a threat to see yeah. black people you know as lower to see black people you know almost as inhumane and it's so wrong and you know the the way that they want black people is they, and maybe you know, they're running out of their mumbo jumbo talent <laughs> exactly <laughs> so they, see, they, they, they see you guys as a threat <laughs> exactly but the thing is that you know they want us to be humble they don't want us to be outspoken you know in the uk we have like a player called angolo kante he honestly yeah. georgie i'll send you a photo of him he's so like adorable he's like five foot six <laughs> he's very like you know very kind-hearted and very easy with his words and they love him because he's not controversial but that's not how it should be if a black person wants to be as you know as um thought-provoking if they want yeah. to be as loud if they want to be as controversial as they want then they should be and you know yeah. whilst i don't agree sometimes with how kanye west behaves I yeah. also see how like the racial element comes into that too because <laughs> people are not like angry with him because really of what he's saying. They're angry with him because he's a black man saying yeah. things that he's saying, you know. And, and, exactly. and they're, they're, they're not used to that. The wrong, uh, they're angry at the wrong correct, uh, reactions. They're angry at the wrong point. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Of course. You know. And this is something that we've seen. They don't like to be challenged. You know. They they almost like makes them start shaking because they're not accustomed to seeing people like me in high position you know people like lewis breaking world records he lewis isn't only just breaking records he's making records that you wouldn't even think would exist you know lewis yeah. is the only driver on the grid to ever win a race in every single season he's ever participated you know how crazy that is imagine <laughs> you know the you know years what's crazy though you know what's way crazier than that so uh, for last year's season, everyone was saying, most of the majority of the Verstappen uh, fans were saying uh, he's deserving, he's worthy because he has he had the best season ever. He was this and that and he had this race wins and this and that. But the thing is like, uh, in the end of the season, uh, with the last three to four year races, Lewis actually went equal points just by three races. He, he yeah. caught up with him just by three races. So I don't know who's the best or whatever. You know, there might be a questionable, uh, questionable yeah. statement there. It's true, Georgie. And this is the thing. This is why you have to put asterisk next to the number one because it's very <laughs> questionable. And it's very fun. You know, I'm not just accusing Verstappen fans of doing this. I think uh, no, 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 no. slightly, I mean, yeah. like, um, you know, guilty of it. But it's funny how, yeah. like, when... The Verstappen fans didn't never wanted to acknowledge statistics or factual things with the sport. Exactly. But then I, I when mean, it came the, down to the, the championship, they yeah, wanted so to rely I mean, on the know, fact that... You are a Louis fan, I'm a Louis fan, so we can be biased. And Verstappen fans, of course, they're going to be biased. But when it comes to the sport, I am a Formula One fan before Louis fan. You are a Formula One fan before Louis fan. There are people who actually love the sport for its sport the integrity we love the sport for the sport not because of the drive of course i'm say, I, I, i can say i love f1 because of louis of course but the same time we love the motor racing sport as well so there's there, there are things that we see we saw what happened in abu dhabi so we can't just ignore and say oh we can't justify that result if it was if it would have been a normal race where lewis lost the game uh lost the race in a normal way then yeah it's just a lost yeah. lost championship that's it we will won we're excited for the 2022 season but that's not what happened that's the issue here yep that that's the issue where we are we are having these arguments we are having these talks that's why we are having all these things because lewis has lost a lot of races as well he 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 was he was not continuously winning all the seven titles he, he had winning years he had losing years everyone had that it, it's very fair when it comes to the sport somebody loses somebody wins but this was not a normal winning or losing racing incident this was a bloody race fixing incident which is totally different apparently some of the f1 pundits can't i identify the difference between a racing incident and a race fixing <laughs> well, that's a good point you mentioned there, George, you know, and it just, again, cash is king, and a lot of these people, they don't want to speak out in injustices because they're too comfortable, and they're from a place of privilege where they feel like if they do the right thing, 
you know, that, you know, it's going to be a threat to their stability. And that's wrong, yeah. wrong, 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 wrong. You know, no matter what it is, you, you, if something is wrong, you must call it out. And that's why, you know, a lot of us, a lot of us are going to boycott Drive to Survive, I'm sure. A lot of us are not going to be, you know, like maybe watching, um, yeah. let's well, say, the yeah, footage, yeah. you know, in, in, yeah. Or even the Sky Sports coverage in maybe the legal way, you know, that, that's the oh reason Oh my God, why, did you because, see the tweets, the replies that everyone was posting? Wow, apparently that shit is a very bloody biased one. <laughs> it was yeah, only, it is. The, 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 the title says dual, but it was only talking about one person. <laughs> <laughs> exactly you know and this is the crazy thing georgie like they, the people they see money before they see the people and it's the people that make the money so yeah they, <laughs> they've got they've literally got like you know their prerogatives the wrong way around but you know yeah I, actually... I mean we understand we understand even the sport or whatever it is it comes down to the business it comes down to the money but still there's a way of earning it this is not a shell company <laughs> it's a sport exactly for God you know, <laughs> That is where integrity comes into it, you know, and they, they must exercise integrity. They must exercise fairness. They must exercise diversity. They must exercise inclusivity. And until they do those things, we won't stop, you know. So that's, you know, what we're really here to achieve. But also probably, you know, to round this uh, podcast off and probably I actually wanted to ask you the question. I wanted to step in your shoes and put something <laughs> kind of like throw the ball in your court. Like, uh, so I'm going to do my best Georgie impersonation here. But uh, you know, I wanted to ask you, Georgie, you know, it is International Women's Day today. And, you know, as a great woman yourself, what would you like to see in F1? First question. What would you like it's to see in happy. terms of women in terms <laughs> of F1? And, you know, so what would you like to see for women just generally around the world? What would you like to see? I'd like to kind of like let you, you know, have that say. You know, I actually want to say that in f1 there should be women representing way more than that because uh jamie has been winning a lot of trophies a lot of titles but she's still stuck with the women's racing and she deserves an f1 uh seat so why not give her one but no one's actually talking about it no one wants to address it because well apparently it's not in their pockets um so yes there should be a chance because I, I don't think we should be um, separated by genders or skin colors or anything. We should be valued and, um, you know, we should be graded with our talents, our skills. There should be a space, a, a place where we can actually um, select people with their uh, pure out of their talent, not because of their race or the, the nationality, or the gender, because it's ridiculous when it comes to the jobs. When we apply for jobs in US or UK or, you know, the European countries, there there's a set of questions that we need to ask, answer first. Whether we are, what sort of a nationality we are from, whether we are Hispanic or Latin, or are, are we are, are, are we are, are, are heterosexual or bisexual, or what, what our sexual, sexuality is, um, even the gender, whether we are female or male, or we don't want to talk about, we, we are not identifying as any. Those are not the questions when you're applying for a freaking job. You should ask me, you should be asking the questions regarding the job. Not whether your mom is a Colombian or whether your mom, uh, dad is a Japanese. Or, or I, I really don't get that system, seriously. So I would like to see a place where people, women or men, woman has way more talent than the man who are in the same job, then the woman should be getting that chance, not the man. It's not about the gender, it's about the talent and who gets the work done. But Absolutely. it's not the case in this world. It's a different world. So I really don't get that. But hopefully, just like I'm praying for the F1 to be better, I'm hoping that this world will be better in a way, in a in a proper mannered way as well. Yay for me, man. <laughs> yeah, no, like Georgina, I think you I said... Forgot that, you know, we bleed once a month. We uh, do the chores. We do the um, feeding for the families. We work our ass off. We are doing all these um, responsibilities and all these bloody hell, all the work, and we can end up dancing with heels as well at night on parties and still manage to go to work and do the work. <laughs> <Next> exactly. <month. laughs> 
it's so true you know and you speak to that as well george you know and i, I agree you know it, it, it's really unfair that women have had this like you know genetic bias against them for so long you know yeah it should be on really, regarding the talent it, yeah it, it should be about yeah. the ability you know and i mean, why, I mean like, it, it applies for the same way if the man is way talented and skillful then the woman of course give the damn job for the man it's not about the gender it's about the talent and who gets the work done sure sure absolutely and you know i think kind of what i was going to touch on is like it's refreshing to see mercedes pick up this like new program to accelerate yeah. 25. it's it's nice that we have drivers like lewis that care you know and he has the 44 you know mission 44 where they're trying to like find you know the next brilliant set of stars regardless of their sexual preference you know their sexuality their race their religious beliefs that you know they're will you know they're looking to bypass all of that and just base it on ability you know and trying to it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to be a harvard graduate or you have to be yeah. albert einstein but it's finding roles and you know finding... sometimes i i think i this is my point of view sometimes there are there can be way more talented ones who are not having the proper financial status to finish their education but they can be very talented and very some sort of a, albert einstein sort of a genius might be there among those people but without money who can't finish their education with only pure talent so we need to focus on giving a hand a helping hand for those who are willing to study and complete their studies but who actually don't have the opportunity or the money the financial stability to do all those things because there might be a solution for hiv among those brains who knows but they will never get the chance because they don't have the the, the, the stability, the financial stability to, or to improve that part. So, yeah. <laughs> so true, Georgina. And, you know, I, I'm so happy. And this kind of like, I might you know, sound my ridiculous, kind of though. <laughs> no, no. Honestly, you know I don't funny. think I, Georgina, I honestly don't think you do. I think that you are speaking the truth and you are speaking the raw facts, the, the truth, the honesty, the real things that people need to hear. You know, and it's the people that are stubborn, the people that come from privilege, the people that don't understand that need to listen to people like you listen to people like me listen to us and like you yeah. know, actually educate themselves because there's a lot to be learned and it's not necessarily to say that room will be built in a day you know or things that will change overnight as we, we said before. yeah but you know that i mean for an know, example when you get sick if there's an if there's a black doctor you will definitely go and get treated you won't be checking the skin color there so no, why do you just be worried about your life you know exactly yeah. so, so why, why the hell would you exactly why the hell would you actually consider the skin color when it comes for the jobs and you know the other opportunities why it's, it's so just true. an ego ego the bloody bloody ego that they have i i really don't i actually don't understand that mindset i really don't get the reasoning behind it and i don't want to understand that reasoning as well because it's ridiculous yeah it's out it's absurd and it has no place in society georgie but you know yeah we we just need to continue doing what we're doing lead by example and we'll see yeah. the change we want in the world so you know and again just big up to you i'm so 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 excited about this journey i'm so so excited about the work that you're doing i'm so excited and another thing i'll say to you don't ever change for anyone you continue being you Thank you, you so talk the thing you know my girl just, i'm so 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 emphatically impressed you know and and moved and touched by the work that you're doing and i know thank you that, thank you, know, you so much this... and i'm so 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 grateful and very 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 happy that you actually accepted the invite and you came to record this fantastic <laughs> fantastic fantastic episode i am so grateful for you <laughs> oh well, georgie anytime listen if you need me back next week next month at midnight anytime at all i you think know, we I, should I have... do this <laughs> more often yeah Honestly, uh, also, uh, please please denzel tell tell us about the uh, youtube channel that you're doing because there's uh, the, the listeners can go and you know check out <laughs> on youtube oh. Oh, thank you, Georgie. Well, honestly, you know, I don't want to make it too much about me because this is about the platform. Oh, come but, on, this is about you, know. you. Come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. I'll take my two minutes of fame. So, yeah, you know, I'm AMG Dens, Denzel Clarkson, uh, brought up in the UK in North London. Uh, I have a Caribbean background from the West Indies. And, yeah, for me, I've, you know, stated earlier, I've always been interested in motor racing on Formula One. Um, you know, I share a platform also with other creative uh, content creators in the space, making similar 
racing content so if you're into like you know gaming and simulators i do a bit of that also you know i'm a musician also in my spare time so i play music and i'm also yeah like a huge huge fan and inspired by the likes of georgie you know to like start even my own kind of things just on um or like having podcasts or having kind of spaces on twitter and places like that as well where we can have meaningful conversations with fans all over the world from different teams so yeah you can find me everywhere facebook twitter instagram youtube all the same thing amg dense and yeah just honestly it, it's so brilliant and i'm really really excited about this campaign and you know the people like georgina as well they don't they are the real heroes they are the real goats you know of this uh world and you know for people like me it, it's honestly Ooh, like, I became a god for god's sake yeah <laughs> <laughs> So yes, give your voice some love. Go check it out. The channel it's really amazing, and I really appreciate the time that you actually spend to you took a time to come here and talk about these things. The, we had a nice conversation, and I hope that we can actually continue these conversations with coming up episodes. Of course, whenever you're free, we can um, pick it a time and we can continue with these whole episodes. So. Um, Thank you so much uh, for today Denzel. I uh, really 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 appreciate it and I hope you have a wonderful rest of the day as well. <laughs> oh, thank you Georgina and thank you to you and also all the listeners out there. I hope you're having a great day. Stay out of trouble, you know, always push, you know, and yeah, like be proud of yourselves because I know all of you guys are working hard and doing some amazing stuff too. So, you know, huge respect to all of you as well. You guys really inspire me and I'm so thankful. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> <All right. All> <laughs>